Considered as the art of composing landform vegetation and water with buildings and pavings, landscape architecture began when settlement began, at least 12,000 years ago. But the landscape profession, as launched by Olmsted, and the term landscape architecture are much younger and remain poorly understood. The profession dates from the early 1860s, and the term from either 1804 or 1828. Joseph Desponzio and Charles Waldheim have made the case for 1804, and I've made the case for 1828. It'd be nice to know which date is correct, but the issue is of little importance. Landscape architecture is older than architecture because, for any building, the first decision is about location and will depend on a wide variety of landscape considerations. Desponzio and Waldheim believe the term landscape architecture is a translation of the French term architecte paysagiste. They explain that it was first used in 1804 to describe the work of Jean-Marie Morel, and that it was then used by Louis Sulpice Vare, Alphonse's predecessor at the Bois de Boulogne, in connection with his work on the urban development of Paris. Frederick Law Olmsted, they suggest, encountered the term architect paysagiste during his 1859 visit to Paris. Olmsted spoke French, and this is possible. My own view is that Olmsted's use of the term landscape architecture probably has an English-language origin. It was used in the title of a book published by a Scotsman in 1828. Gilbert Lang Meeson's work on the landscape architecture of the great painters of Italy was about the relationship between landscape character and styles of building design. The most famous garden and landscape writer of the age, John Claudius Loudon, welcomed the new term. But when he used it twelve years later, in the title of a collected edition of Humphrey Repton's works, it was not with Meeson's reasoning. Loudon seems to have used landscape architecture for a specific designed style, which we would call rustic or irregular architecture since Andrew Jackson Downing also used it in this way, it must surely be the sense in which Olmsted first came across the term. So why did he give it a new meaning? My guess is that Nina Antonetti has found the explanation. She discovered that the most celebrated English garden designer of the period, William Andrews Nesfield, had used the term as a professional title in 1849. This was in his report on a garden design for Buckingham Palace, commissioned by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. This was not an obscure project, and the design was done just two years before Vaux left London. It may be that an interest in gardens was a factor in Downing offering him a job just a day or so after they'd met. Vaux had served an apprenticeship with Lewis Cottingham, who'd worked on country houses, and who'd taken a job, which Repton had rejected, designing a new front for Elverston Castle. Cottingham admired Repton, and Vaux admired Cottingham. Calvert Vaux was the experienced designer and draftsman in the two-man team which produced the winning entry for the Central Park competition and is known to have been more enthusiastic about the term landscape architect than Olmsted. Its use could well have been his idea. But the important question is when did the art of landscape architecture originate? Olmsted became the father of the landscape architecture profession, but he was not the father of the art of landscape architecture. Norman Newton's Design on the Land and the Jellicoe's Landscape of Man both trace the history of the art back to ancient times. And so do I. But what are we discussing the history of? The best answer I can give is that we are discussing the history of the art of composing landform vegetation and water with buildings and pavings. 
This is the art which reaches back at least 12,000 years. But the recorded history of the art goes back only 4,500 years. The first text to describe the actions and the results of composing the five elements to make a city with gardens is the Epic of Gilgamesh. Here is a section of Kovac's translation. Go up on the wall of Uruk and walk around. Examine its foundation, inspect its brickwork thoroughly. Is not even the core of the brick structure made of kiln-fired brick? And did not the seven sages themselves lay out its plans? One league city, one league palm gardens, one league lowlands? This reads to me like a landscape architect's account of a design project. The seven sages were the craftsmen of Enki, who gave mankind the skills that made civilization possible and desirable. So, to conclude, Olmsted is the father of the landscape architecture profession. But Gilgamesh is the first landscape architect known to history. <laughs>